So I'd like to begin. Um, I'd like to begin by inviting the the forces of protection and goodness to come and be part of this event, this day, this day of practice together, and to uh, be around, stay around in our lives. Merito ana me tang sa me ta ba tang ta. Ha vi ki ta ji ta pa ri tang ba nan tu. Sa man ta chaka va le su a tra ga chan tu te va ta. Sad hamang muni raja sa. Sunan to Sakamo Kada Sage Kamecha Rupe Giri Sikara Tate Chantali Kevi Mane Dipe Rate Chagame Taruana Gahane Gehawa Tumpi Gate Umma chayan tu deva, chalatala visame yaka ganda banaga. Titanta santi keya muni varavachana, sada wame sunantu. Uda da sanakalo ayang badanta. Amma savanakalo ayang badanta. Sanka pairupa sanakalo ayang badanta. And um, there's an opportunity to take the three refuges and the five precepts. Noam, are you able to share that? Yes, thank you so much. <clears throat> so please, um, forget whether we do it as call and response usually or together, just call and response. So we'll do it as call and response, different communities do it differently. So I'll chant the first three lines three times, it's saying homage to the Buddha, our teacher. And then line by line through the refuges in the refuge in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha, and for a second time and for a third time. And then we'll go through the precepts one by one. And this is a, a beautiful support and container for the practice. Mortasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambutasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambutasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambutasa. Amatasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambhutasa Namatasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambhutasa Uttang Saranangachami Amang Sarananga Chami Sankang Sarananga Chami Dutiampi Bhutang Sarananga Chami Dutiampi Dhammang Sarananga Chami Namo 
Dutiam pi sankang saranang gachami. Tatiam pi bhutang saranang gachami. Tatiam pi tamang saranang gachami. Tatiam pi sankang saranang gachami. Now we'll go through the precepts. And I'll chant in Pali, and then you can say in English, it's written there. Panati pata veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking the life of any living creature. Adinna dana veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from taking that which is not given. Kame sumi cha chara veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precept to refrain from sexual misconduct. Musavada veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precepts to refrain from false and harmful speech. Sura mereya manja pamadatana veramani sikha padang samadhyami. I undertake the precepts to refrain from consuming intoxicating drink and drugs which lead to chemists. Nimani pancha sikha padani silena sukha tingyanti silena bhoga sampada silena nimbu tingyanti tasma silang visotaye. These are the five precepts. Sila or ethics, morality, is a support for true happiness, a happiness that we all seek. Sila is a support for true wealth. Sila or ethics, morality is a support for the peacefulness that leads to freedom. So take good care of your sila. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. So, um, just say a word or two. So my, my name is Ayananda Bodhi and uh, from Aloka Vihara Forest Monastery. And the theme of the year is uh, stages of the path. Can you hear me? No? Yes? Yeah. Um, I, someone put in the chat that they're still having a hard time hearing. I think it, the mic just needs to be a little closer and I don't know. If, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Hello. <laughs> I can put it right in my mouth. How's okay. that? Is that better, Caridwin? Yeah, it's because I it's because yeah. I, I don't speak very loud. This is the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. We appreciate it. Well, that would be great. Let's see if it can go up any further. How's this now? Is that any better? No. There's a thumbs up. Is it better or the same? Better? Thumbs, thumbs, thumbs. Yeah, well, okay. All right. So I'll, I'll make effort to not uh, mumble. There's captioning. Okay. That can be helpful and it can be confusing. So, yeah, you can take your choice. I think that sounds louder. Yeah, that's better. Oh, it's in here. All right. Okay. We're good. All right. Okay. All right. So um, the theme of the year is stages of the path. 
and uh, you know, I since Ch since Chita and I are, you know, there there are many levels to that, and um, in a in a way, for me anyway, week by week or month by month, uh, it'll be a little different what I'll bring up depending on what feels relevant, and. Um, one of the reasons I was drawn to that theme is because I feel that the practice, you know, there's the there's the stages of the path in the classical way, which I spoke about a couple of months ago. And then there's uh, sort of what happens as we practice. And it does seem to go through different stages. And, and, um, and there can be that experience of hearing a teaching and at least for me, you know, I might like through a chant or through a, through a, usually it's through chanting in my world, but I might hear some chanting and I, I reflect on it and there it is. And I think I know it. And then one day it's like, oh my goodness, how did I miss that? I never saw that before. All these years I've been chanting that and I didn't, you know, and that's kind of how it works. The, the, the Dhamma is very obvious, actually. It is just very normal and very natural and very evident, but we miss it because our minds tend to complication and, you know, we, we think in terms of separation, separate people and personalities and all of that. So uh, it can be like that, you know, in the early days of practice, it can be really exciting that we have these big aha moments and, and we feel like, wow, you know, having these really great breakthroughs and, and then, and it is like that. And then after a while, after some years, the insights get a little bit more embarrassing because <laughs> you wonder, how didn't I get that before? <laughs> you know, because it's actually just bringing us more and more back to a natural state. And uh, so in a way, the path works as a spiral, like taking us deeper and deeper or, or further and further away from the illusion, whichever way you want to take that spiral um and it's not a it's not a straight line generally um so i've spoken before about the stages of the path the, the classical stages and then there's like how does one apply the practice in this life and at this time you know there are many challenges in the world they probably always have been i think but you know, we're very. It's very obvious that there are many challenges to being able to just open to the sheer number of challenges and just sort of atrocities and impending disasters that we have rolling in on us at this time. So, um, mindfulness and awareness is a, an essential aspect of the path, always. But we, we may also need some support and some skill in, you know, managing the heart at this time. So, uh, so I'm going to speak today about the Brahma Viharas, the four Brahma Viharas, or the Appamadas, the immeasurable qualities of the heart, which uh, I'm sure everyone is familiar with, but I'm going to bring them in, uh, speak a little bit about how I use them as a response how I meet what's going on using those Brahma Viharas. So that'll be a little bit after the meditation. And I just wanted to let you know, sort of introduce them. And uh, so we're going to go into the meditation now, and then there'll be a, a few minutes break, and then we'll then I'll speak about the, I'll give a little Dhamma reflection about the Brahma Viharas as a response to the conditions that we find ourselves in. And the Brahma Viharas are those four heart qualities of metta, kindness or friendliness, karuna, compassion or the wish for all beings to be free from harm or any intention to harm, uh, mudita, appreciative joy, and upeka, equipoise or equanimity. So I'd like to invite us to take our meditation posture and just settle into this seat. The seat that we are taking. And if you're sitting on a chair, I would recommend that you have your feet on the floor or on a cushion so that you have a, a good foundation beneath you. And if you're able to sit cross-legged, then um, just 
Just make sure that your body is supported, that your knees aren't floating in midair. And, and one of the important things is as best as you can to have a, an upright posture so that your spine is erect. So just taking a moment to take your seat. Take fully occupy your body right now. It's helpful, you can take a few deep breaths. And then just let the breath return to its natural rhythm. And going to the base of your spine. Just bringing your attention up the spine. Vertebrae by vertebrae. Going all the way up your back. Up into your neck. And up into the base of the, of the skull. And you may find, I find that when I bring my attention all the way up the spine, it's, it elongates the spine a little. And my, my chin tucks in a little. So that the spine can take its full length. And I'd like to invite you to check in and just see how is your heart right now. So the mind might be busy with this and that and thoughts and worries and plans for the future, regrets about the past or longings of the past, whatever. We want to bring the mind into the present, body and mind together. Noticing any feelings in the body. Any constrictions, perhaps. And just let your breath open up. Let your breath open up the chest area. Let your shoulders shake off any burdens they may be carrying. So that there's full room for your breath to enter your body.
Just noticing your belly, whether there's any constriction in the belly. And just allow your belly to relax and make room for the movement of each breath. We're going to be doing some metta practice. And I know for some people it's difficult to access. There may be a sense of, well, I can't do it, it doesn't work, I don't like it, don't understand it. So metta is a quality of, of unconditional acceptance. It can have a warmth and a brightness, like a, a radiance, like a sun. And it's uh, un unconditional, it's indiscriminating. It's just, and it begins at the, in our heart center, at the center of our chest. At least we can access it there. And it can be helpful just to put your hand on your heart to make that connection. And it's on your heart center, not the physical beating heart, but right at the center of your chest. And as we breathe, we breathe into that area. We make space around the heart center. This is a practice. So sometimes people do, you know, five minutes of metta, 10 minutes of metta. It's like a little sprinkling at the end of a meditation. But I think the metta practice, the Brahma Vihara practice, is more important than that. Something to really put effort and energy into, to really take care of. Because everything we think and say and do springs from the heart. So breathing into your heart center. So if you have a, a little difficulty accessing metta, there's a little trick I found recently which works for me and that is to reflect on the likelihood that somewhere in the world right now someone is practicing metta for the benefit of all sentient beings. I know there's one person doing it right now anyway. And if you think about all the different time zones and all the different practitioners, you know, there's many Buddhists, Buddhist countries, Buddhist practitioners in non-Buddhist countries, non-Buddhists who practice loving kindness, There's so many people around the world who do this practice of kindness, metta for all beings, that the likelihood is that at any time someone, somewhere is sending metta to you to each of us that we can take in. So taking in the metta, taking it into our heart, into our lungs, into our body, into every cell of our body. not wasting that good practice, but somebody somewhere 
is cultivating. And metta is unconditional. It doesn't ask us to be perfect. It doesn't have any criteria. It's just offered freely. So taking in the metta into every cell of your body. This is going direct. It doesn't have to go through the gatekeeper of the mind that might tell you, you know, you're not worthy or there are parts of you that aren't allowed. It doesn't go through that gate. It goes direct into the heart. With real clear attention, attention and intention, taking it in to every cell of your body, to every corner of your mind. And if you get, start to feel that you're beginning to saturate, then you can let it continue outwards in all directions. That same quality of metta, unconditional friendliness or acceptance. 
just letting it radiate out in all directions. Not forcing it, not trying too hard, but just making that invitation for it to keep on spreading out for the benefit of all beings. We don't have to get involved in individuals who we like and who we don't like. And we're just letting that quality radiate out indiscriminately, for the benefit of all beings. Just as the, just as the sun shines on all things equally. And making sure that you keep uh, filling your own being so that you're not uh, getting spent, getting exhausted, sending metta out for all the world and using up your own resources. It starts by filling up your own system, 
your own body and mind, and then spreading out from there for the benefit of all beings.
I'm not sure if the people on Zoom heard the bell, but the bell marked the end of the meditation. So if you want to just take a minute or two to stretch. Mortasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambutasa Namortasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambutasa Namortasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambutasa Bhutang Tamang Sankang Namasami. So I think one of the dilemmas of this time is how to meet the world that we live in, how to show up for this complex, um, turbulent, troubled world that we live in. And this is a question that I've been carrying for some time. So I'm in a situation where I don't have to look at the news if I don't want to. So I sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I don't every day, but I do like to see what's going on. And, and then it it's, can be pretty overwhelming. The, the sort of short-term news and the kind of long-term prospect is, is like, whoa, the times are in. And, uh, you know, and, and so I, there's this question for me, like so how, to, how to meet this in a way that is, that has integrity and uh, is authentic and, and uh, connected without sort of being totally overwhelming. Because, of course, you know, we need to be able to function and be a source of uh, at least presence in the world. And uh, so I've been exploring this for some time of just how do you meet this? You know, and what makes the heart shut down where it gets overwhelmed and then just like, okay, just gets guarded. And 
And uh, what I've found, so I have worked with the Brahma Viharas a lot over the years, so they are relatively accessible. And I do think of them as very important um, qualities to cultivate in, on our path. They do sometimes get uh, diminished, I think. You know, the, the wisdom teachers get exalted, teachings get exalted, and the heart teachings get diminished often in the Western world. So I'm going to put in a little plug for the Brahma Viharas today as a very skillful way of responding to life. So I was looking at it, how do we, how do I take in pretty intense, difficult information and not just close down or push it away or distract myself? And uh, so I was exploring that, you know, what is it, what quality meets that? Because uh, just presence, just sati on its own, just, just awareness on its own. It's important, but it, it sort of feels like it needs a friend or two to come along. And so I found that uh, what, so if I, if I, if I let the, the troubles of the world touch my heart, there's the first feeling that arises is a sense of sorrow for me. A sense of sorrow is like, oh. Sorrow about, um, you know, what we're doing, the human race, and, and you know, like seeing our potential and seeing what we're doing, and there's sort of some sorrow, and, and the sort of intractability, it seems, of, of the structures that have been that we've developed that are you know serving a very few people at a very huge cost to, to everyone and everything else it brings a sense of I mean it could bring anger but it actually brings sorrow for me sadness and uh, you know knowing about wars and floods and fires and droughts and famine it's like wow you know and it's some of it's on the news and some of it's local no, it's a mix. Some of it's people I know, some of it's families of people I know. No, it's a mix. So what I find is you know, that information comes, it touches my heart. I mean, it goes in the head, you know, but it, it touches my heart. And there's this sadness. And, uh, and it could, if I let it, that sadness could get really big. And it could just be a bit of a sort of a well to fall into or a swamp to fall into and I know that that's absolutely unhelpful to everyone including myself so I've tried that long ago and it doesn't benefit anybody so there's this recognition is like I don't want it to I don't want it to be imperv impervious you know I want it to be able to touch me because it's real and it matters but I also don't want to be lost in it and what I find uh, comes to meet it with that intention, if I hold that intention of like allowing my heart to feel the sorrow, but not drowning in that sorrow, what comes to meet the sorrow is compassion. It's the first thing that comes up, compassion. And then as the compassion arises, it's almost like it, it, turns, it, around, it turns the whole thing around in the heart. So the sorrow doesn't take away, it doesn't, it doesn't push away the sorrow, but it's like the heart shifts from that, that not wanting, not wanting it to be this way, into accepting that it is this way and having compassion for how it is. So it's like there's this transformation and I don't know if it's useful to you, but in the, in a classically, like the sorrow would be seen as an unwholesome state. It's like a, it comes under the category of not wanting, of aversion. Even though it's sorry for something that's like a good reason to be sad about it, but it's there's this like, I don't want it to be that way. It shouldn't be that way. And so there's a certain taking issue with reality of things as they, things as they are. 
and there's the compassion is, is kind of turning that around and meeting it as it is and making room for it without kind of drowning in it. So it kind of transforms the quality of sadness into, into a wholesome state of, yeah, ah, it's really so much, you know, and there's, there's, a, there's a, a certain quality of love and acceptance and, and compassion that meets that. And if I stay with that, that compassion, it's like it starts to open the heart and it's, um, and it clears something, it clears away some of the clutter, I find. And then I stay with that for a while and then it's, and then, I, and then the question comes, so why, you know, why is there sorrow? Why do I feel sad about things as they are? You know, why is, why is there a need for this response? It's because, because there's so much potential, because there's so much beauty, so much beauty in the world. Nature is incredibly beautiful. And there's uh, so much potential that human beings have. We have so much potential to do good and to be kind and generous and work together and to be playful and creative. And, you know, there's so much potential and, and some of us, you know, some people are doing those things, thankfully. And some, you know, many people are not. And, uh, well, many people are actually, many people are. And then the, there's this also the kind of, maybe the, it gets, uh, I don't know whether it's just we hear more about it or it just impacts us a lot, you know, the, those who are not. And uh, so then there's this rec rec um, recognition that there is the potential for so much good, and so much beauty and so much wholesomeness. And that brings up a sense of mudita. So then it's like tuning into the goodness tuning into the beauty, tuning into the, into the potential. And that brings up this sense of mudita. Because if it was all just like a waste of time, you know, then it wouldn't really bother engaging any of, it wouldn't bother engaging the heart at all, really. You just like just shut it down and give up on the whole thing and wait till it's over, you know. But uh, that's no way to live, really, is it? And it's definitely not a way to practice the spiritual path. So I find that there's that, you know, being touched by the sadness and then the compassion arising. And then there's like a natural evolution towards this mudita, this appreciative joy, this, um, you know, seeing the, seeing the beautiful potential, and just staying with that for a while until that, really, it's really taking it, that in, really taking in the goodness and the beauty and the potential. And not only the potential, but the goodness that is manifesting right now in many, many ways. Many places, many businesses, many um, you know, cultures and families and in nature itself. You know, there's many places where there's good stuff happening. So it's just taking some time to take that in to let that nourish the heart and uplift the heart. And, uh, you know, until it really brings a smile to one's face, not just like cynically, like, oh yeah, it's all terrible, but I'm just doing that Medita thing, you know, no, really letting it, letting it fill you, letting it, taking it in, because it's part of the picture. It's part of life, our own potential and the, the potential of others. And the potential of this, this amazing planet Earth. Planet Earth, wow. It's so creative. It's like it's, it's endlessly creative and responsive and generative. And it's like incredible. There's a sort of incredible brilliance going on. You know, so just like letting oneself take that in and be filled by that. And then I find naturally from that, because it's a very joyful and heart-opening quality, Mudita, naturally from that for me comes metta, which is like the radiant practice of 
kindness for all beings, unconditional love. I didn't want to say unconditional love in the meditation because sometimes people are like, oh, I can't do unconditional love, you know, it's too much. So I avoided those words, but unconditional acceptance or kindness. And but it is a it is a form of love and it's unconditional. It's not it's not asking for any particular criteria. It's just loving, it's just radiating, it's just friendly, warm. So I find that's a natural progression from the mudita. And then to stay with that a while, to take to let the whole system be transformed really by that metta really on a cellular level it does it does actually change our system it vibrates through the cells of our body it changes the patterning of our mind if we cultivate it and so to spend some time with that quality of metta just letting it radiate out for the benefit of all beings. You know, what harm can that do? And then the cynical mind might say, well, what good is it going to do? It's not going to help anybody sitting here. You know, yeah, maybe it's going to help this one. And it might help the people who this one meets. It might even, you know, be doing much more than that. Like I said in the meditation, you know, there's people practicing metta all over the world. and we can benefit from that, take it in, get our own meta kick started, send it out. You know, it's and uh, I noticed how animals recognize this. Human beings don't always notice. We can be very guarded and very head centered, so we don't always notice the the heart qualities that people cultivate or beings cultivate. Animals really notice. They pick it up, pets pick it up, and uh, you know, if you stay still long enough, certain wild animals will pick it up. They'll know that you're, you know, you're harmless and you're, you know, you, you have, a, have an intention of well being for others. So maybe humans do know, but we kind of, our thinking mind overrides it. The doubting mind maybe overrides the intu intuitive knowledge. But it's it's a it becomes a field, a field, um, an energy field that we create in and around us. So uh, this natural progression, you know, from the taking it in and the sorrow and the compassion and mudita, and then metta, I find they flow along really well one from the other, and then just staying with that metta for some time until it really fills you and starts to change the whole way you're feeling and experiencing things. And then I guess because metta is this unconditional radiance, for me that naturally leads to upeka, the unconditional radiance of, it's another form of acceptance. So metta is like sunny and loving and joyful and and upeka is much cooler. It's sometimes likened to the radiance of the full moon, like a soft glow, cooler. And uh, but it still has this radiance, it's still a loving quality and it still has this radiance. And uh, upeka Opeka is, is really understanding and accepting the, the nature of the conditioned realm. So it's understanding that everyone who's born goes through a process and dies. Birth and death come together. There are two parts of one process. It understands that you know, everything that's formed has to break up, even a planet, even a galaxy. That's just how it is. And uh, Upeka can also, um, you know, when we get very caught up in 
moods and thoughts and fears and resentments and you know, this kind of stuff, there can be this, uh, the, you know, I've said it a number of times before, but what works for me is just to look up at the night sky, if you can see it. Look up at the night sky, or if you're by if you're by an ocean, or by or looking out over a onto a horizon, you know, just just look out at the vastness, and that vastness gives a context for this for this feeling that might be going on here. This me and mine story, this should and shouldn't story that's going on here, or this good enough, not good enough story, whatever it might be. The 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 vastness, I find it, of space, I kind of, kind of lean towards the cosmic. So the, for me, the vast, vastness of space gives a context for this little thing that's going on here that can seem so big and so everything. And then it's like, oh, it's happening in this, this body, on this continent, on this planet, in this galaxy, in this universe, which has they now think perhaps trillions of galaxies, trillions of galaxies. And then it's like, oh, maybe it's not that important after all. Maybe I don't have to get quite so caught up in this. <laughs> so it gives a context. So Upeka gives, it's like the big picture. It's taking in the big picture, it's understanding the whole thing. And it's still paying attention to the information, but it's not getting caught up in details. It's like, mm -hmm, yeah, there's, there's birth, aging and death. There's gain, enjoyment and loss. There's pleasure, change and pain. You know, that, that, that's just how it is. That it's, all of that is going on. There's success, change and failure. There's, um, fame and disrepute there's all of that stuff you know it's just like the the worldly winds this is the nature of life so upeka understands that and it's not it's not careless it doesn't it's not that it doesn't care but it recognizes oh yeah you know there have always been people who want to have a lot of power and who use their power for their own ends i mean do we know a time in history where that wasn't happening? There were maybe certain tribes that weren't doing that. And there may have been other tribes at the same time who were doing that, you know, it seems. So it's like, this is, this is what people tend towards. And it's still going on and it goes on under different names and it gets covered up and hidden sometimes. And, Certain countries say, no, we don't do that. And then, then one finds out, oh, yes, there it is. It's going on. There are the oligarchs, you know, there are the, those who are hoarding all of the wealth and all of the resources. You know, that's, it happens. And it's not that, it, that one doesn't care, but it's more like, oh, yeah, this isn't new. This has been going on for a long time. And wars, horrible though they may be. You know, they involve people. They have been going on for a long time. We do wars. Human beings do wars. So Upeka, it's like it's, it's not uh, ignoring the information. It's, it's taking in the information. It is kind of heartbreaking. And it's like, hmm, and this is what we do. It's always been like this. So Peka gives us a way of meeting the experience with a kind of with a bigger breath and with a, a greater acceptance. And for me, the Upeka quality also um, it reminds me that I can't make samsara right. I can't make this endless realm, endless cycling of birth and death, of change. I can't make it right. And the idealist in me would like to. I'd like to. It would be great. I mean, it would be great if we could just do that, you know, all of us together. 
but um, I can't even like get my whole family of six people to agree on something. So the likelihood of, you know, changing the world is very small. So, um, so Upeka also leads to that quality of wisdom that's like, you know, it's like this. And there's a certain letting go around that. And that letting go isn't um, an indifference or not caring. You know, there can still be activism and effort to change and doing what we can, but it's doing it within the context of like a, as an offering rather than as a trying to get everything straight. So I find that those Brahma Viharas in that sequence is very helpful in meeting conditions as they are. You know, the first, the compassion is really like meeting the suffering. And then the Upeka comes back to like, mm -hmm, it is, it really is like this. And it's always been like this. It's always, you know, it's like, this is how it goes. And then that for me leads me deeper on the spiritual path of like, so what is the way out of this endless cycle? And I think I'm going to leave on that note. What is the way out of this endless cycle? It's an important question. It's not, an, it's not, an, it's not a question that one answers in a, you know, what is the way out? This is the way, you know. Well, the, the, the Noble Eightfold Path is a way out. The awakening factors are a way out. Yeah, there's many ways. And they're not simple, they're life paths. But I wanted to offer that today. And I hope it's helpful in some way to you. And that, uh, you know, all of this stuff is, is practice. It, it's not just about listening to a talk and then, then going home and doing the same old stuff. You know, it, it's about application, practice. And, dedicating time and effort and intention and um, letting go, all of that. It's, it's our work if we want to do it. So I want to offer that today. And uh, I'd like to invite if there are any questions or comments, particularly comments actually, but questions or comments, Please go ahead. So I'm just going to say for the people on Zoom. So, so Carl is just saying uh, he's just wanting to comment on the last thing. I, oh yes, please. Oh, good. There we go. We have a microphone. I mean, on the last thing that Maya was talking about. Can, can you hear me? No. Uh, can you hear Carl? It's a little quiet. If 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 you could hold the mic closer, that might help. Thank you. <laughs> cherries uh yeah so i was just commenting on uh what i was saying about it's not just about listening to a talk but it's about you know doing the work the practice and just over the years it's really struck me uh <laughs> oh maybe this is the embarrassing part you were talking about earlier about <laughs> insights there's like you know my own laziness and like yeah i know i should but yeah, <laughs> but that's really not doing the practice and not and not doing doing the work. Um, and not to say that it's hard, but it's a constant a constant doing is what I find constant remembering to do. So uh, yeah, thank you for mentioning. Yeah, constant. I think that's really true. It's a constant remembering. I think that's very well put. Yeah. Again and again.
Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is funny to do this. Oh, uh, just thank you. Like, oh, wow, I really needed this. And, and, and in particular, while we were meditating, um, I get attached to wanting change. You know, I get attached to like wanting to, you know, my brain is like, oh my God, how do I do this? Like, how am I going to fix this? Like, how can I be a good person in this world? Like showing up that way. And I get really attached to it. And I know that that's not healthy. And I, you know, in the meditation, I was like, what, you know, what can I give? What can I say to this attachment? What's happening with this attachment? And so when you were sharing about the, and I don't know this word, so the word that you were saying, I think it was. Opeka. Opeka is um, like an equanimity. It's, I think it's not a great translation because I think equanimity always sounds rather flat and Opeka isn't there, but it's, it's uh, I, one translation is like seeing the uh, the big picture, like bird's eye view. Yeah. It helps so much. Like it was the uh, like moments, like, you know, I could feel all the sorrow in my heart, and then just this, you know, like these moments of release in that. Like, oh yeah, this is. There's a little. I I got the coolness, like that kind of feeling of like, oh, to have that, you know, to allow that to arise in me of this, this is how things are. This is nothing new, you know, and um, it's just sit in it, you know? So I'm just really grateful for that. I think just a lot of your, you know, just bringing that in and, you know, I, I feel like, whoa, yeah, I'm gonna need to practice that a lot. <laughs> I'm just like sitting it with that, but um, just to have these tools. Oh. Always feels a little short, but we are coming to the end <laughs> of this time together. So uh, let's just take a moment to take in the, the teaching and the, you know, the, the heart quality right now. Just uh, also recognizing how the breath, like taking a breath, can make a little bit more space in the heart. Then feeling your body, your feet on the ground or on this cushion and your butt on the chair. Brings you into presence. And that's an essential aspect of our being here on this planet and of uh, being able to show up is to actually allow ourselves to be fully embodied. So it's a practice too, it's a practice in itself. So I think we've come to the end of our time. The church bells are ringing. So thank you for joining me today. It's been good to be together. Thank you for your awesome t-shirt, Noam. <laughs> Very heart-centered. Uh, I'd like to end with a little blessing. Bawad to te, bawad to samba, mangalang rakang to samba, devata, samba, bunda, nubhavena, sada, soti, 
Bhavan to te, bhava to samba mangala, rakang to samba devata, samba dhamma nubhave nasada, soti bhavan to te, bhava to samba mangala, rakang to samba devata, samba sankhanu. Bhavena Sada Soti Bhavantute And that's wishing that all of the forces of goodness and protection support you. Wishing that you may be well and always have the three jewels, the Buddha Dhamma Sangha as a refuge.